Hi, well, welcome back. And let me apologize that it's taken me so long to get the wrap up on this video done for this storm shelter that I've been working on. I have like three other, the typical me is I have like five projects going at once. So I'll start one, one, and I get almost done, and all of a sudden something else comes about, and I start focusing on other things, and I lose track. But thankfully, I have an awesome wife who reminded me storm season is upon us, and that it would probably be a good idea to finish a storm shelter. So that is what I have done. And I, I appreciate the com some of the comments. All, all the comments, actually, I appreciate all of them. And that, even the constructive criticism one. Uh, but there are definitely a couple that are helpful that, that I didn't even think of at the time. And I've, I'll, I'll mention those in a minute here. But well, one of the ones, well, somebody warned me that F5 tornadoes can blow nails and rocks through doors and windows and everything like that. I, I, I know that. Actually, I do know that. Uh, the area we live in, we don't live in the heart of tor Tornado Alley. We live on kind of the outskirts in Texas. You know, we're, 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 we're not... Uh, I looked back in the history. We This area that I live in <laughs> has never been hit by an F5 tornado. So my chances of winning the lottery are greater than us getting hit by an F5 tornado. So I'm not really worried about that. This storm shelter is a storm shelter. We have more major weather events out here than tornadoes. We we have we can have very strong storms, big huge hail, and I've even heard people talking melon size. I don't know more one here wouldn't happen, so I, I can't tell you if that's truth or fiction. So we. Just want this storm shelter was was not intended to survive an F5 tornado. I in no way claimed that it would survive an F5 tornado. I think I'd be hard pressed to say it would survive a direct hit by an F4 tornado. I'm pretty confident anything F3 or lower. I, I'm thinking a direct, even taking a direct hit, I think we would be doing pretty good. Um, so yeah, I mean, one gentleman even made the comment, and I shouldn't say gentleman, one person made the comment that, well, it would be good for a basement, but ground level, eh. Well, <laughs> tell you what, dude, jump in the closet, I'm jumping in here. Uh, I don't have a basement to go to, and if I had a basement to go to, I wouldn't build a tornado shelter in my basement. I lived in Wisconsin, actually, in a bigger part of the tornado alley and I didn't build a storm shelter in my basement I never felt the need for that but hey to each his own you know I mean I'm, I'm sure you can get it take a direct hit by an F5 tornado with a basement and get sucked out of your house and I can have a Chinese spy balloon fall on my house too you know so I I, I can't plan for everything once again this storm shelter is just what it is it, it's it is better than what we had. What we had before was basically, we had a choice. We had a choice of a closet or a bathtub. I, the closet is actually on an outside wall. It's a brick outside wall, but still a bad idea. It's just a closet. So the, the inside one would be the, the tub. And I, I think I'm better off in my storm shelter than the tub, so. We'll stick with that one. And the comment was made also about I should have used OSB board because rocks and stuff bounce off of OSB board compared to plywood. Uh, the information I have gotten off of FEMA's website states that uh, plywood is 30% more puncture resistant than OSB board. But you do you, and you do your own research. Uh, I did mine, and I did me. So I, I elected for plywood. I don't have anything against OSB board at all. I use it on my shed. I don't use it on my house or my shop garage. This is all plywood. So yeah, like I said, nothing against OSB board. It's just the research I have said plywood, uh, inch per inch whether you're using half inch to half inch 
if to get the same puncture resistance you had to size up your OSB board. In other words, if you're using half inch plywood, you have to use five inch OSB. Or if you're using five eighths plywood, you have to use three quarter inch OSB. That's what I got off of FEMA's website. There are also a couple questions if I could give them somebody advice and that, and, and not really. I. I Go, go to FEMA's website. They, they have do-it-yourself plans. There's one for poured concrete, uh, brick concrete, uh, and made out of wood. That's that's what I elected to do. And I kind of made my own. I, I didn't make it as heavy duty. The, the one they made is made for worst case, you know, uh, F5 tornado. Uh, I, I didn't go that far with it. So I, I, I don't feel comfortable giving somebody advice on, on something that they put their lives, trust their lives to. Uh, I, I, I would recommend do, do your research. I, I showed you how I mounted mine to the slab, you know. So, I mean, just, you know, do, do your research and, and just really mount it and just make your structure basically one piece. Metal strapping is, is your friend when it comes to making a wood structure one piece and you know when i mentioned about our basement we, we had our basement in, in wisconsin i actually took a section of our our basement it was it was kind of a, a office den rec room type room and that was our tornado shelter what i did is i basically secured the the, the floor joists I, I built an interior wall anchored that to that wall, anchored that wall to the, the foundation so it can't rip off the floorboards. And then on the, in our center of our basement, we had a steel beam that ran through and I anchored, I used metal strapping to anchor the joists down to the, the metal beam so they could not get lifted off the foundation. And then, then on the inside, I put half inch plywood just so, you know, it, as far as being the, the floor joists because you really don't have to worry about flying debris we, we were basically eight feet underground so I'm not too worried about flying debris and we didn't have any windows in that area of the basement so I mean I we we, we felt perfectly fine through that now we, we had a actually had a tornado about eighth eighth of a mile from our house so I mean, we didn't suffer anything. Our, our roof, our shingles. I, we we lost one little tree. That that was all we had. I think that was F two. But uh, so yeah, I, that's what we did with our basement. If you, if you have a basement and you're thinking about doing one of these storm shelters things, look up other. There there are way better options if you have a basement with limited windows in it. As far as making a storm shelter down there but it, it looks more like a, a room i'm talking a big room a 12 by 12 room it's so easy to do if you have a basement here in texas basements are rare so we had to do what we had to do here i'm not saying it's perfect i'm just saying it's better than it's better than what we didn't even have and as far as the the hidden door i was i was, I was attempting to make yeah, yeah, I really, I tried a couple different things and I just kind of, I went, I'm not even calling it a hidden door and you'll see when we, we go into the house, I'll show you. It's more of a not so obvious door, I guess is what you call it. But if you look at it, you can, you can tell it's a door, but I was not willing to spend thousands of dollars on those, those manufactured ones that you can get over here. And I was kind of limited for the space that we had. So as far as getting the, the whole in swing, because when you do a hidden door, if you research it, you need the whole in swing and stuff. And you know, yeah, you can do the paneling and bookcase. We just didn't have the room for it. And I'm really not that worried about it. I just wanted something that just wasn't obvious for a door. So that way, if you have somebody break into your house and they're running about, I'm thinking they're just going to walk, run, walk past it. Now, if they have time to spend in the house and look around, they're obviously going to see it. So I'm not calling this a hidden door. So please don't <laughs> say, that's not a hidden door. I know it's not a hidden door. It's a non-obvious door in my mind. 
but it, it might be obvious to you, but I guess without seeing the whole decor of the house, it, 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 it's really not that obvious for us. So, and th then somebody wrote, uh, uh, small biz and a shout out to small biz said don't forget the kitty litter and, and I thought about it for a second and he's just like oh gosh I never even thought of that you know and that is so true I mean even if you're trapped say we, we get hit by something and we are trapped in that room for eight hours six hours even and you have to use the bathroom uh, your choices are on the floor you know, I mean, whether you, you, you got to do one, one or two things, uh, your choices are right there on the floor, which are pretty nasty. And so I never even thought about that. But yes, I mean, if you think about it, it wakes you up in the middle of the night, you run to your storm shelter, go in there, you get hit, and all of a sudden your roof is on your house, and you get now have to spend some hours to chop through there. And Mother Nature calls. <laughs> you know it, it is what it is and so yeah it's right there on the floor you know and it's just like yeah it, so I can and somebody else uh, 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 Dawn Cornwall uh, ma mentioned something about putting a bench in there you know somewhere to sit and they said you know and they said well what about a folding bench and I thought ah that's what I was I was trying to come up with an idea for some sort of seating just so you could sit down and that but it is such a small room we didn't have a lot of room so I'm like why can't I incorporate the two of those together and I'll show you what I came up with here in a second so here you can see uh, the outside of the the room originally this was a recess in the, the just a room where it was just an opening uh, that butted up against the uh, master one of the bedroom closets here so the drywalls up and painted I have some uh, the wainscot on there and here you can see the not so obvious doors I call it I am not calling this a hidden door in any way shape or form but it, it's something that I think if somebody's in a hurry they're probably just gonna run right by it and that we still got to get pictures and everything I just put the the master guardian up here to keep us safe should we have to go ever use this for a real storm shelter so you can see this just opens up and I'll step back and you can kind of see it's just door made out of you know some plywood and some strips of wood and then I have this door built on the inside of it <clears throat> and you can see this is uh, two by sixes. This is all nailed together, stripped two by sixes. I have the emergency flashlight on the side here. And this lock, I, I understand that's nothing. It's just, you know, basically if, if we have somebody in here as far as uh, somebody uh, uh, pet sit or something for a couple days while we take a little mini vacation we just lock that it's just a deterrent for you know in case we have somebody here in in the house doing some pet sitting or something and then once it's open you know you, you can see the the thickness of the door have the shelving have some wa water we still have to get a couple other little supplies in here but we have some kitty litter actually one of them's half full uh, maybe two-thirds full of kitty litter and the one in back of it actually has empty and has supplies in it and the one that's uh, two-thirds full of ki kitty litter also has uh, some tools you're just typical hatchet crowbar just something that if we're trapped in here we can get out so now in here you can see I have this uh, fold down bench down here and let me go inside this door closes what I have on this is just your typical Fred Flintstone lock and lock so it cannot blow in and it's up against the the plywood jam on the outside so it cannot blow out so like I say it's your typical old 
castle fred i just called it fred flintstone you know or something in there and you know we have the fold down seat over here which this spins and let me set you down for a second then once folded down i have it where it sits actually on the the kitty litter buckets and if needed we pull the cover off of that one and do what you got to do and this way you can put the cover back on obviously don't put the tools back in it after that but it's sturdy enough both my wife and i have sat on this and you can't open the door with this down so that's a drawback but that's the drawback of having a small room but it's usable you have a place to sit you have a place to do other things if needed oh and i wanted to show you i, I bought these heavy duty ball bearing hinges on here there's three of them on there they're they're pretty 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 resilient hinges so yeah and it, these here i mean it is what it is i i think it'd be uh, pretty hard to pop these open too easily. Like I say, I'm not planning on this surviving a direct hit from an F4 or F5, but I, you can't plan for, for everything. I mean, maybe if you have uh, thousands and thousands of dollars, you can. Well, I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars, and I don't have anybody sponsoring me on this stuff to pay me to put anything in. So I put in what I can afford to put in. And I will take this night and day, seven days a week, over a bathtub or just the closet. And just to give you a little bit better view with the door opened, as far as uh, the, the fold down seat that, yeah, it's just sitting on the buckets that we keep in here. Like I say, one of them has some dry uh, foods in it you know as far as just you know your typical trail mix or just some, so, something protein I'm, I, I'm 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 thinking we should never have to spend more than 12 hours in here but it, it, once again you can't plan for everything when your your space is so limited but you know i mean so yeah we would have enough stuff for you know maybe a day maybe two at the most but i'm thinking i can pretty much if the roof's on top of me i Hopefully I'm not injured and using the hatchet and, and uh, crowbars and whatever other little tools I decide to throw in here. I can hack my way through our roof and get us out. So far in the safe has been great. No troubles with it. You know, um, it, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And yeah, as far as the, the door, everything, like I say, as long as you put your safe in and you get it nice and level at the bottom and you don't have a, a floor shifting all over the place it'll stay nice and square because as soon as the bottom goes out on you if you don't shim it nice and square you can rack these believe it or not and then the door sticks so there you kind of have it i mean that's the room you hope you hope you never have to use and i my, my plan was was to give me and my wife somewhere better than a bathtub or a hallway closet or something. And I, I believe I accomplished that. I don't think I accomplished us surviving a direct hit by an F4 or an F5, but I, I didn't build us a shelter to survive the asteroid that's gonna fall on our house either, so. You know, and then it closes up real nice. I, I just used some self-closing hinges on it, so. You know, it, it closes up, kind of keeps it tight so it don't flop around on you. And <clears throat> like I say, hidden, no. A little bit less obvious maybe to some people. So, you know, there, there you have it. So there you kind of have it. Like I say, it's, it's nothing special. It's nothing big. Actually, it turned out a little bit smaller than I was hoping. I was hoping for a little bit more room, but we had the space. That was the best I could do. You know, I, I might be able to have gained maybe six inches this way or that way if I did something different, but I didn't think that was really going to make or break the deal with us. So I appreciate the comments. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. That yeah, and you know, I hope I didn't offend anybody. That you know, but I tell you right now, if you're straight faced with me and, and you tell me your opinion, I'm telling you mine. So I mean, 
like it or not, that's just kind of the way it is when you leave a comment by me. So I, I take all comments inside. If somebody said, wow, that place, it, it sucks. I, I, I don't care that's your opinion. So here's mine. But anyways, I appreciate you watching. Uh, once again, sorry it took so long to get back to this. You ought to thank my Send a letter to my wife, thank my wife, saying, yeah, at least kick his, kick him in the ass. Again, I just, I, I just after I started this, we had, we had a small bath that I was working on remodeling. And we're, all, we're also trying to get our den, den room done. And we had to tear up the floor and we're putting in some cabinets that I'm working. I've been building the cabinets in the garage. So it, it's just typical me. I get I get sidetracked on all these different jobs and get them going. So I apologize for the the delay in getting this back to you in that. So appreciate you watching. This is Casey. Take care.